overcome. You're listening to the Overcoming Daily Podcast with Anna Johnson of sacredlifecoaching.com. These things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you'll have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Episode 38 of Overcoming Daily with Anna Johnson. My name is Anna Johnson and I am your Overcomer Coach. Today's Overcomer tidbit is this, the Overcomer Serves. Now I know, once again, I am sharing a simple, fundamental, basic, basic concept for the believer. But the children of God need reminders to get back to the basics. We need reminders to strengthen our foundation, to honor our foundation, and to make sure that we are operating from that foundation. In my coaching as an overcomer coach, I see that people are enduring challenges, sometimes simply because they've they've strayed away from the basic concepts. And so It's really important that we embrace the basics and that we honor them and we hold fast to them. So the overcomer serves. Now, most of you that are listening are probably Americans. And we know that American culture is very self-driven and very ambitious, self-ambitious and very self-centered. And like I said, self-driven. And so... We're going to talk about a couple of things today. One, we're going to talk about the things that hinder us from serving. We're going to talk about the things that hinder us from serving from a pure and clean place because it's not enough to serve. We have to serve from a pure and clean place because that is an acceptable offering and sacrifice unto God. We can't just check serving off the list and do it with an unclean heart and an unclean unclean heart posture. That does not work in the spiritual realm. So what hinders us from serving? Well, one, worldly messages will hinder us from from serving. Uh, We have to remember that as children of God, we are called to be unstained by the world. And this has got a lot to do with what we allow our mind to receive. Because what we think, it will impact our feelings and what we feel will impact our behavior. So we have to be really careful as to what worldly, what worldly messages we allow to take root in our mind. And matter of fact, we need to really resist every worldly message. The world The world is a broken place. And so our mind is set on heaven. Our mind is set on the word of God. And when you live in, live in this world, especially American culture, I mean, we are saturated with, you know, being self driven and going out and getting what you need and having your own stuff and being about me, me, me. And, you know, it's our responsibility to basically take a shower from all this filth. Uh, on the regular, like we have to cleanse ourselves from all these messages that try to come at us or stick to us. And sometimes it's not even the culture. Sometimes it's the flesh. The flesh wants to be served. The flesh wants it to be all about me. The flesh a once a lot of times wants things to be fair, fair, fair. And the reality of it is, is that life isn't fair. I mean, life isn't fair. And if the believer is looking for fair, they're going to be disappointed because God tells us that in this world, we will have many trials and tribulations. We will have suffering and we will have sacrifice and it will not seem fair. Was it fair that Messiah had to come and bear our sins and die so that we could be saved? When he was out with, he was without blemish and he did nothing wrong. Was that fair? And if we are called to be like him, then who are we to desire fairness for ourselves? Let God determine what is fair and reward us according to his will and purpose, removing ourselves from that equation. So for those of you that are listening, that are serving and listen, you may be serving on a ministry level. 
All of us should be serving our families in some shape, way, or form. Keep serving, but take it to the next level. Ask yourself some hard questions. Like, what is your mindset towards serving the people in your life? Is it because it makes you a good person? Is it because it's just what you're supposed to do? You know, and what are your expectations out of that serving? Are you just simply serving because because God has called you to serve and you're serving from a place of love and not just simply obligation? It is good to serve out of obligation, but it is greater to serve out of love because we are all obligated to to love one another, which is service. And we look at Messiah and because he loved us, because he loved us, because the father loved us, he served. Messiah served because he loved us. And so all believers are obligated to serve, but take it a bit deeper. Do it because you love like Messiah loved you. And, you know, resist the enemy because like I said, some of you are serving and you're, you're serving and, and that is great. And I want you to continue in that, that serving, but resist the enemy. You know, the enemy is going to try to get you to look at how the person doesn't appreciate what you're doing and is going to try to tempt you to be bitter, to be uh, full of pride and to um, demand, demand something back from people or to just stop serving or to be bitter, which is really like self-destruction. So um, keep serving, but take it to the next level. Take it to the next level. Now, all of us know or have had this experience with customer service, right? Um, you can always tell the ones that are just there to get paid versus the ones that are just there to serve. And because they're serving, then, you know, they get paid. We all can, we all know that person. And we would much rather be served by the one that's just there to serve from a clean and pure place than the one that's just there because they're serving because they get paid. Okay. So the overcomer serves from a pure and clean place. So let's just take a quick inventory. How many of you are serving and what does serving look like? It looks like dying to self. It means like it, it means that you're serving people even when serving slash loving, put those two together, you're serving and you're loving people even when they have nothing to give you. You're serving and you're loving people even when they don't love you back. Even when they don't love you back the way that you think they should love you. Now listen, while we were yet in sin, Messiah, he paid the price. He didn't wait for us to get it perfect. He paid the price while we were in sin. So we need to serve others where they're at and stop waiting for them to be uh, where we think they should be for us to serve them. Many people that desire to do good and they want to honor God and they are honoring God by serving, but they fall into a pit along their serve, along the journey of serving because of this, because they have an expectation out of people or they allow the enemy to speak to them. They allow how people treat them to speak to them instead of allowing God to lead them. May God always lead us in service. Think about Messiah. You know, he's loving on his disciples. He's healing people. He's uh, forgiving sins and he's loving the people. And he didn't stop serving, even though more people persecuted him and accused him than those that loved him. He didn't stop serving. He didn't allow himself to get bitter. He didn't re allow himself to be resentful. He didn't have a pity party. And so a lot of times people in ministry which our life should be a ministry, but um, people that are ministering um, fall into a trap with this because those who actually work in like um, anybody working in ministry will run into this where they'll be pouring out themselves and very few people will be receiving them in love or pouring into them or uh, being there for them. 
Now that leads to my own personal testimony as an overcomer coach. Now, many of you that have been listening to my podcast know that I left private practice to serve the body of Messiah. Many of you know that I sold all of my things and I was homeless for a while and now I live in a camper. And um, you know the sacrifice that I've made to serve. But the sacrifice that I made to serve was for God first and foremost. He called me to serve and he's called me to do some serving in a way that doesn't make sense to people. So while I was homeless in the beginning, I was providing free coaching services to people who were living in a home who had pretty adequate resources when I didn't even know where my next meal might come from or, you know, how my, my shelter situation was kind of unstable. And I was serving them for free. Now, these people didn't think that they had money to share with me. Um, and I'm not to judge that. That's between them and, and God. But the point is, is if I had focused on that, I would have given up a long time ago. I would have stopped serving. My eye wasn't on the people. My eye was on God and being obedient and trusting what he has called me to do. And he called me to serve these people regardless if they could or would pay or not in that season. And so I, I did it. I did it. So I'm not sharing this information from just a, just from talk and just from knowledge. Like this is something that I have lived out and I'm still living. I'm still living it out. I'm still living it out. So I am still serving people that are in a better position financially or resource wise. I am still serving people and helping people overcome despite my own need. And so that leads me to what I want to encourage on our last point today is, is that we are called to serve even in our lack, even in our own need even in our own need. And I'm reminded of Messiah when they come to get him, to crucify him, when he, when they come to arrest him. And uh, Peter responds and he, you know, he, he responds and attack and he cuts off the, the, the guard's ear. And Messiah is about to be arrested. But in his affliction, meaning that the, the oppression is coming upon him right there in that moment, He chooses to serve and he heals the guard's ear and rebukes and encourages his disciple. Now we know as overcomers, we are called to look like him. Matter of fact, the only reason we have overcomer status is because of Messiah. And so as overcomers, we have to remember to do as he did to be as he was and let his let him reign within us there shouldn't be a disconnect he should be prevailing righteousness should be prevailing and working in and through us and it should flow out of us and that is why many of us many people do not overcome is because they do not serve And those that are serving many times, they've not taken their service to the next level. And there's no reason for shame. There's no reason for guilt. This is just a call. This is, this is love. And love is saying, do better. You know better now. Do better. Do better. Be encouraged. Do better. Repent. So let us not only serve, but let us serve from a pure and clean place. Let us look to God and say, God, If your son did it, I'll do it. I will follow my Messiah. I am a follower of Messiah. So some moms that are listening, moms, serve, even when your children don't appreciate it. Wives, serve, even when your husband doesn't see it or appreciate it. Friends, serve, even when your other friends don't see it or appreciate it. Remember why you're serving. You're not serving first and foremost for them but you're serving because that's what your Messiah did. That you've been called to love as he has loved you. He served you even when you refused to serve him or didn't understand the need to serve him. And by that service, it is a miracle 
that even we have a pulse. It is a miracle that we are still alive at daily. It is a miracle. There are, we have so many miracles happening in our lives daily. And that is because God looks after us. And that's service. That's servanthood. So let us turn to our focal point in scripture today. And our focal point in scripture is Mark chapter 10, verse 43. But it is not so among you, but whoever wants to become great among you shall be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you shall be servant of all. For even the son of Adam did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Let us be as Messiah. Let us pour out our lives as our Messiah did. Let righteousness reign and rule within us. Let us serve and love freely. Love freely. That love doesn't have a cost. That it is, that it is free. Like we, we're gonna, we're just gonna love. We're gonna love. None of us can repay Messiah for the love that he has shown us. And who are we to go and, and demand payment, retribution? Who are we to do that to others? It is like that servant that has been pardoned from his financial burden and then he goes after another and demands payment. And we know that that is wickedness. So let us not be deceived. Let us not fall into the flesh. Let us not fall into our own understanding. Let us not embrace the the mindset of the world. Let us remain, uh, let our garments remain unstained. Scripture tells us that it is better to serve than to be served. So if we truly want to overcome, we need to learn to serve. And uh, if you're serving, you need to just take it to the next level. Is it pure? Is it holy? Is it an acceptable sacrifice unto God? Let us conclude with prayer. Father, I thank you for each and every listener. Father, have mercy. I pray for mercy on each and every one of us, that you would forgive us for the times that we refused to serve, for the times that we were deceived in our serving. Father, please forgive us for every unclean motive and heart posture, Father, in our serving. Father, help us to love like you have loved us. Help us to serve as Messiah has served us, that you would be glorified and that you would be exalted in our lives and that many would come to Messiah because they see him working in and through us by the testimony of our faith in the works of our life, Father. So, Father, we thank you in the mighty name of Yeshua, I pray and I thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This concludes episode 38 of Overcoming Daily with Anna Johnson. Please remember that the overcomer serves. You don't have to save yourself. You simply have to obey the voice of God. And he has called you to be a servant. If you found this podcast helpful today, if it's encouraged you, feel free to respond in love and make a contribution at sacredlifecoaching.com or share it with someone. Share it with someone so they too can be encouraged and overcome daily for his glory. Until next time, have an overcomer day. I am praying and sharing for you. Shalom. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Overcoming Daily with Anna Johnson. Tune in again next time where Anna will continue to give you tips for overcoming daily. daily. And to stay updated, make sure to subscribe to the podcast. You are an overcomer. You're called to overcome. And if you found value in this episode, please share it on social. Share it on social. Sign up for a free coaching session with Anna Johnson at sacredlifecoaching.com. Sacredlifecoaching.com. Until next time, have an overcomer day. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you'll have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world.